Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. Today, I want to show you two experiments which you can use to investigate the rate of enzyme catalase reaction. In an enzyme catalase reaction, an enzyme will cause the change of substrate into product. There are two ways to investigate the progress of the reaction. Firstly, one can measure the rates of formation of the products. Secondly, it can be done by measuring the rates of disappearance of the substrate. We'll use one example to understand each of the method. Catalase can be used in this investigation. It is an enzyme which catalyzes the formation of water and oxygen from hydrogen peroxide. By collecting the oxygen form in the reaction in a fixed time, we can find out the rate of the reaction. Catalase can be found naturally in the cells of many organisms. A simple way to obtain it is by using potato. Here is the procedure to carry out the experiment. Firstly, place a fixed volume of H2O2 in a conical flux or boiling tube. Set up a container with water and place a measuring cylinder invertly in the container. Use a tube to suck out the air in the measuring cylinder so it is fully filled with water. Prepare a bung with delivery tube and insert one end of the tube into the measuring cylinder. Cut a piece of potato. As soon as you put the potato into the conical flux, use the bung to close it. Make sure it is airtight. Start timing using a stopwatch immediately. Oxygen formed in the reaction will appear as air bubble in the measuring cylinder. After a fixed time, record the volume of oxygen collected in the measuring cylinder. The rate of reaction is the volume of oxygen collected over time. If you want to have a more accurate calculation, you can record the volume of oxygen for several times at fixed time interval. Then, plot the data into a graph. Work out the gradient of the graph at the start. This is the initial rate of reaction, where the substrate is abundant and the reaction is the fastest. It represents the rate of reaction more accurately as the substrate concentration is not a limiting factor at that point. Starch and amylase can be used in this investigation. Starch forms a blue-black complex when tested with iodine solution. So we can find out its presence easily by performing an iodine test. In this experiment, you need a spotting towel or alternatively, a white towel. On the spotting towel, place drops of iodine solution. In a test tube, add in amylase and starch. Start timing using a stopwatch immediately. At a fixed time interval, for example, every 30 seconds, use a pipette to take a bit of the mixture and place it onto one iodine drop on the spotting towel. In the beginning, you would expect the drop to turn blue-black. As you repeat the process, eventually, the iodine drop stops turning blue-black as starch is completely broken down. This is the end point of the reaction. The rate of the reaction is 1 over time of the end point. Both of the experiments can be used to investigate how different factors can affect the rate of reaction. For example, if you want to know how temperature affects the rate of enzymatic reaction, you can use a thermostatically controlled water bath to set a fixed temperature for the reaction. Repeat the experiment using a different temperature and calculate the rate of reaction each time. You will get to see how the rate changes as temperature is altered. Other factors you can investigate including substrate and enzyme concentration, and pH by using different buffer solution. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Do share it with your friends as well. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.